その時確かに誰かが私を呼ぶ声を聞いたのです剣を手に戦えゆう子魔王ロブレスを倒すのは君だゲームソフト「無限戦士バリス」8月21日発売眠らせない I almost started today's show wearing a t shirt, which you might not think is a big deal, but、uh, I actually ironed this shirt this morning. Just so I could wear it on the show. So that would have been a shame. Anyway, Renovation Month continues here on YouTube's hottest new show. And、uh, this week,、uh, well, let me back up a little bit. You know,、uh, there's only four weeks, as I said,、uh, four weekends rather, in,、uh, in April. You know, some months have five weekends. And、uh, so we can only talk about four games out of the renovation library. And so, you know, I'm trying to showcase,、uh, I don't want to say like the good games, but like, you know, a representative sample、uh, of why renovation is cool, right? So、uh, the first week we did Granada, which I, I love Granada. And、uh, I'm not really sure how to categorize that game. And I guess it's a shooter. Like, would you say like a free roaming shooter?、Uh, Renovation,、uh, by way of telling it, has a lot of shooters, not a lot, but a multitude of shooters. But I wouldn't really lump Granada in with those. Like, those are all like scrolling, you know, spaceship shooters or whatever. Granada is kind of its own whole thing. And then last week we did Arcus Odyssey, which, speaking of which, listen, if,、uh, if people saw that it was Arcus Odyssey and just didn't want to watch it, that's fine. But、uh, I did release that video at sort of an odd time. You know, it was like a Tuesday morning or something, and、uh, it's got a lot less views than Granada. So,、uh, just if you didn't know,、uh, didn't get a notification or didn't see it,、uh, please do go check that out just because、uh, I think Arcus Odyssey is just such a good game.、Uh, anyway, there's not really another game that I can think of in the renovation library that's like Arcus Odyssey.、Uh, they had, I can't even remember the name of it, they had some other sort of RPG ish kind of game, but it's really nothing like Arcus Odyssey. But, Now,、uh, this week, obviously, as you can see, we're doing Valise 3, which is an action platformer. And、uh, there you've got some choices.、Uh, there's like Ernest Evans, uh, uh, El Viento, which I was really kind of like, I couldn't decide if I wanted to do El Viento or、uh, Valise 3. Part of the difference is like there's somebody down in the comments, like I think it was the same person,、uh, both of the last two weeks that asked for Valise 3. But、uh, also, I don't know. I just, I've been playing、uh, Valise 3 all week and just really enjoying it. Whereas、uh, El Viento is a good game. I mean, you should, if you've never played El Viento, you should check it out. But、uh, I, the game's got kind of this fast, sort of frantic pace to it that maybe I'm just not in the mood for right now. So、uh, Valise is kind of a, a slow game and it's, it's more of like an enjoy the journey kind of thing. I don't think the game is really all that hard. But、uh, it's just really enjoyable. It's got sort of an interesting story, although to a certain extent it kind of goes over my head. But、uh, it's got a lot of cutscenes. And I hope you like cutscenes because they're not skippable. So、uh, we're watching the cutscenes not because I want to make you, but because the game is going to make us. And、uh, what else? Oh, I didn't even open the、uh, capture software over here.、Um, who cares? Safe mode. Uh, anyway, uh, what was I going to say about? Uh, uh, no, I don't want to update right now. Wow.、Um, <laughs> the joy of computing.、Uh, I was just going to give maybe a little bit of a frame of reference or some context、uh, to this game. First of all,、uh, there were, of course, three Valise games released here on the Genesis. This being Valise 3, as you would expect, it was the, that's right, first game. 
released. Uh, they came out kind of backwards. So uh, Valise 3 came out first, came out here in June of 1991. So um, just to give you an idea of where we're at sort of time-wise there, right around June of 91 is when Sonic the Hedgehog came out, uh, Streets of Rage came out. So I'm going like maybe like plus or minus a month. Streets of Rage came out, and I think Midnight Resistance came out, and I'm sure plenty of others as well. I haven't done a Sega Genesis in 1991 video yet, though I would uh, I would love to. So uh, I'm not really sure what else to say. Uh, this is not a game I ever played when I was a kid. I used to have a copy of this game. I had uh, all three Valise games, just the loose cartridges, and uh, I thought I still had it, and I looked in my loose cartridge drawer, and it's not there anymore. And then I remembered uh, that I sold it to sort of a, a friend of the show. So so we don't have that anymore. Um, uh, oh, well, you know, the, the Valise trilogy did get, uh, uh, you know, re-released by Retrobit a few years ago. And I think uh, I think that one might have just was that just sold through LRG uh, limited run games here. I'm not really sure, actually. But uh, just this morning, uh, friend of the show, Jonathan, not that Jonathan, uh, uh Jonathan, who owns uh, Rob back here, he uh, picked me up a copy of Valise 3 at the Limited Run Game Store because I didn't pre-order any of those games back when they came out. I kind of think, like, you know, because uh, you had Valise, and the first Valise, that one's, like, okay. And then what we got here, we got Sid of Valise, like S-Y-D, Sid of Valise, which, uh, I you know... People said that that was like some sort of like localization error because in Japan that's called SD Valise because it's super deformed. So like uh, there was that game that came out here on the Super Nintendo. Did it come out here? It was only supposed to come out here called Super Deformer and it had like Ultraman in it and uh, like some other, uh, you know, Japanese TV characters. And but they were all super deformed, right? So they were like, you know, little chibi characters with big heads. Super Deformer is a cool game, by the way. But uh, so Sid of Valise is just what we got here as SD Valise. And someone's trying to say, oh, they didn't know what SD was. So they said Sid. And I don't, I don't really believe that. But uh, I'm not really into that game. If you're only going to play one Valise game, you should play this one. Also, uh, Valise 2 and 3 both came out on the TurboGrafx Turbo CD. So you can also play them that way. But uh, I, I, mean, I haven't done any kind of like compare and contrast but uh, the general consensus online, uh, one, is that Valise 3 is the best one, and two, that maybe Valise 3 is better on the Genesis than on the Turbo CD. I haven't done, like I said, any kind of comparison, so I really can't say. So um, so that's about it. Uh, we're just going to play the game now. And uh, like I said, uh, unskippable cutscenes, and uh, the game's not really, like I said, that hard. So... Uh, I, I just sort of enjoy the experience of playing it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, switch the view here and start recording. Got the old familiar uh, Mega SG interface. We have to go to cores, Genesis core, and uh, find Valise 3, which is right there. Glames is like the main uh, bad guy, so that's that's what you need to know about that. So that's one thing I was going to say, actually, I don't know if, I mean, I'm not saying there is, I don't know if there's any kind of like uh, misconception out there 
that like Valise is the name of uh, the main character in the game. It's not. The main character is Yuko. Valise is her sword. So, and then that's Cham. I don't know if that's how you say it, Cham. And uh, basically what happened there is that Cham goes into uh, Yuko's bedroom and steals her Valise sword. So now here Yuko comes out, uh, still wearing her PJs there, uh, saying my Valise sword has been stolen by somebody. I've got to get it back as soon as possible. And that's because I think Cham's going to go off and fight that Glames dude. But so now here, like, you can control Yuko, but all you can do is jump because you have no means of attack, which is fine because there's also no enemies in here. So I don't know if this is to, like, just get you used to how the game uh, handles. And that's all I was really going to say. I mean, this is really one of my only complaints about the game is uh, the characters, they all handle the exact same. And they're kind of slow. And, you know, you don't jump that far. You can hold up while you jump and jump even higher. That's kind of cool. Uh, you can also slide. I'll show you that later. But, um, you know, when I first was playing the game, it's like, man, this feels so slow. But really, you get used to it pretty quickly. All right. Anyway, uh, my name is Cham. Yeah, so see, she stole the sword because she wants to go fight uh, uh, Glames. Uh, because, uh, as we saw at the beginning, uh, Glames wants to come destroy the human the human and Dreamland world. So there's three worlds in the game. There's the human world, Dreamland, and then the dark world, which is like where Glames lives. And then I don't know who this guy's even supposed to be, but uh, I just really like the character design. But uh, he comes down and grabs uh, Cham... See, everybody's confused. And uh, so she's calling for Yuko's help. And then so I don't know if, like, she yeets the sword or if she just drops it or whatever. But so now Yuko's like, oh, I need my sword back. And so she just, like, straight up jumps off this building. So you see, she gets her sword back and now she turns into, you know, whatever, like super Yuko mode. And so now you can attack. And uh, let me just pause it real quick. So up in the upper left-hand corner, you've got your hit points uh, along the top. Right below that, you've got your magic points. Right now, we have no magic points, which doesn't really matter because just to the right of both of those, there's those two gold brackets with like the little red jewel inside. If you had a magic item, which would let you cast spells, it would be right in there. And then to the right of that, it's showing you which uh, which characters you have that are available uh, because you can switch between characters in this game, sort of like certain Castlevania games. Right now, we just have Yuko. And then uh, your time and your number of players, nobody cares. But then below uh, magic points down there, you see there's sort of that sword with the red line through it. And watch, if I swing the sword, it like empties and then refills. So see, if I go like this, it never refills all the way. And so it, uh, how powerful your attack is depends on whether or not that's refilled. And then two of the power-ups you can grab, one of them makes that thing bigger so that your attack is even stronger, and the other one increases the recharge rate. So also kind of like Castlevania, these things here, you hit them, and then you get items. That was, that was good for two magic points. So now you can see we have a couple magic points. Here's two more. And then in this level, it's these weird... I don't, they look like like a cross between like a roly poly and a wolf. And then this guy uh, blows this stuff at you. So we just jump down here. Takes a few hits to kill. There you go. All right. Moving along. More magic points. So that one just gives you way more magic points. That's like the mega. It's like in Castlevania, like little heart, big heart. And here you got to watch it, because if you fall down these pits, you die. Although I think this game gives you unlimited continues. I haven't really tested that theory, but I've never played the game and had it actually straight up give me a game over. So this sword right here, if we pick that up, see now our, our sword meter, whatever, our, uh, weapon meter, I should say, is at uh, full strength. And I should say weapon meter because the game, like I said, you have three characters you can choose from. Oh, man. Okay, that, okay, that's a magic item up there. I think that one's fire. There's like fire, ice, and blade. Is that right? I have it open right here. 
Um, where did it go? Oh no, I lost it. Oh yeah, yeah, there it is. Yeah, flame. Oh, it's flame, ice, and thunder. So this one is uh, uh, flame, and all three of the characters. Oops, all three of the characters have sort of different spells based on uh, which magic they're carrying. So I'll just show you right now. So you hold uh, up and B, and so it. See, there's these little flamey swords that they'll go attack something if there's anything on the screen. And then here you can either jump over these things. Or remember I said you could do like a slide, sort of a Mega Man style slide like that. Oh, and I don't think I mentioned that, uh, so this game was released in Japan by Renovation Game and released here by Renovation Products. So that's why there's this cool uh, Reno, you know, lit up sign in the background. I just think that's pretty cool looking. Um, all right, this meeting was done quickly. Do you understand why Warrior of Elise? So this is like the first boss battle you have to do. So you just have to duck to avoid that chain thing. And then he throws these blades. Um, generally in this game, if there's some attack that you have to duck to avoid, if you try to uh, attack while you're ducking, you'll take damage. So like, don't do that. So see, pretty easy. So now we get Cham uh, back. So of course there's gonna be another cutscene. I'm gonna drink some Gatorade. Like, I have no idea what that means. Nether space. So I guess this is kind of important. You've got like the two swords, Valise, which we have, and then this other big old sword is the Lethus sword, which, uh, as it says, is now owned by Glames. So if Glames gets both swords, he can use that uh, to do something bad. So uh, we don't want that happening. And I don't understand why Glames is in all caps, because it's not in the manual. So now we start uh, the second level. I I take this to mean that now we're in dreamland. So uh, the two main uh, enemies here are, uh, I don't know if you saw that sort of red outlined enemy and then these, uh, uh, I don't know. It's like, you know, in Star Trek, you had like evil Spock. These are like the evil Twizzlers lips. Oh yeah, see there's the red outline ninja thing. So, I mean, we've got our our uh our sword meters full and we picked up uh, the upgrade that has it fill up faster and we have full uh, magic points so there's really not a whole lot we can pick up as far as power ups go with the exception of a heart which would give us back 
we're missing a couple of hit points there. So um, this is a spot where you want to be careful. Okay, that's a different uh, magic item. So now we have a different uh, spell. So right here, you want to be careful because it'll send out an enemy when you're trying to jump and then you'll fall into the water and then you're dead. All right, so now we're out of the forest and uh, we get to this dock with this dude on a boat, kind of reminiscent of Castlevania too. So now we're looking for Princess Valna, who has been imprisoned in the Tower of Gull. Uh, that, by the way, is uh, Yuko's uh, sister. If you're, you know, taking notes at home. So, uh, She's asking this dude for a ride on the boat. Only one person can come, so now you have to leave somebody behind, although it's going to let you pick. So, see, you can pick Yuko or Cham. Um, I just stick with Yuko. I don't use Cham in this game that much, although there's a boss battle that we'll see where I think Cham is the best person for that. So now we get on the boat, and uh, so you can't move around too much, but you have to watch it because... Uh, these green, like, swamp thing looking things uh, pop out of the water to kill you. But uh, you see their projectiles move so slowly that they're really nothing to worry about. All right, so now we got our hit points back. And it doesn't really matter if you kill those things or not. You just don't want to get hit by their, their loogies or whatever. But, I mean, this is a pretty slow-moving uh, part of the game. That doesn't get me anything else, but... All right, so now we're done uh, with those things popping out of the water. But we're going to get a little, uh, not quite a cutscene right here, but um, a stoppage. All right, so Yuko asks why you're stopping here. And then uh, this dude tries to put the squeeze on you. Oh, I, I need additional fare uh, beyond this point, so give me your sword. Kind of reminds me of like when you get a taxi to the airport, you know, and they tell you it's going to be 80 bucks. And then you get to the airport and they're like, oh, it was actually a hundred. So uh, I don't know if this counts as a boss battle or just like a mini boss. Uh, you know, to me, if it's a boss battle, it means the level's over. But I mean, this game doesn't really have levels. It has like areas. But, you know, if you want to consider, you know, anything between a cutscene as being a different level, then I guess there you go. I'm taking a lot of hits here. So it's kind of not clear to me, like, did the, the the dude driving the boat turn into the sea monster, or did he just dip and a sea monster showed up? I'm not really sure. So now we're inside of this tower deal. I don't know what that's even supposed to be. But uh, what we're generally trying to do in this tower is to go up. Oh, man. Oh, check these guys out. These guys, like... Oh, good. He didn't do it. Those guys, like, throw out maggots. Which I'm not a huge fan of, but... Oh, yeah, see? There's... Some kind of larvae. We got somebody in a cage over here. Uh, that is the fire guard, Koli Lanba, who is standing at the top of the tower. Princess Valna has been imprisoned in crystal. 
Coley Lanva is taking her uh, prisoner to King Glames. All right. So, so I take it Coley Lanva is like the boss we have to fight at the end. But then, like, you don't even do anything to, like, help this guy out of the cage, so. No! You don't have very much time to pick up those power-ups, so that's gone now. We have to slide under here. And I could swear there's like something up here, but I don't know how to get up there. Hmm. There's definitely some secrets in this game. Because I have found a few of them. Uh, but I mean, unless I... Oh. Maybe I'm mistaken about where I am exactly, but... Now we go in this door. It's funny that it, it seems like, oh, it's like a different scene, but the door we just went into is right down there. So all we did was go up a few feet. So I'm just not sure how you would get, like, see over here, there's somebody else in a cage. I mean, that's not the same person we talked to before. See, like right here, it's all solid, but you can jump through just right there. So I don't know if that's like a, a secret per se, or what. All right, we've almost got our health filled back up. Anymore, but and we know this already. All right, well, that's concerning, but Get up there. Oh, there we go. Alright. Alright, so now we're gonna go uh, back outside. I always thought this looked pretty cool. I mean, it's pretty basic looking, but it, I think it's nice pickle, uh, pixel art, especially the background. Alright, so there's uh, Princess Valna or whatever in the crystal. Now you just have to, like, keep hitting her until the crystal breaks. There you go. Wow. Pessimistic much? All right, so then she's asking about the, this Coley Lanba person. I suspect it's on the roof of the tower. And, uh, oh, but as ruler of this world, I, this is uh, the princess speaking, as ruler of this world, I must defeat Coley Lanba. So now you're, we're gonna take control of the princess, who's like more like a mage. All right, I, I like the background of this one too, even though again, it's pretty simple. So you see like she's a mage. So she shoots out whatever those things are. So uh, he's pretty uh, easy. Uh, you just have to avoid uh, these little fire things that uh, he throws, which is really just a matter of like timing your jumps.
There's I, I just used uh, some magic, which actually freezes it in, in place for a second. Not doing a super good job this time, but we're fine. There we go. Alright, so I don't know which sister's talking to which there, but uh, we have to go to the Dark World and stop King Claims. And that's actually showing you there, that's all three playable characters you have in the game there. So, uh, now we've got our whole crew together. So, uh, like, Yuko is just all, like, you know, hot and ready to go uh, face Glames, but then um, somebody's pointing out to her that her sword is, like, not uh, fully powered up. So we don't want to go do that yet. And uh, how can I release the sword's power? There's a country called Sutherland, named after, of course, the great Donald Sutherland, which is uh, the closest of the countries to being perfect. Nizetti the Elder. We have to go find this Nizetti guy because he will power up our sword all the way. So now we're playing as uh, as Yuko again, although now if we want, if we hold down the A button, see, now we're going to switch from Yuko to uh, the princess, and then if I hold it down again, we go from the princess to Cham, and uh, so here you can see, so Cham has like a, a whip, Castlevania style, so that's pretty neat, but uh, I prefer playing as Yuko, so... And this is kind of an interesting area here. So, okay, so it says uh, three chimes of the bells of justice, truth, and bravery will open the door to the mighty power. So, so the first thing we have to do is uh, go ring that bell three times, which, I mean, whatever, but... And the way we do that is just by hitting it lots of times. Okay, that was the bell of justice. So now we rang that, and then you basically have to get off this platform and and go back over there and uh, these knights are kind of nothing to worry about but every once in a while one of those swamp thing kind of deals pops out of the water like right there and they're pretty annoying so that was the bell of truth so now we rang the second bell so now you have to jump down again And finally, that was the Bell of Bravery. So now the door is going to open. And we can just go ahead and go in. So, sorry, let me see. I want to show you the, the, the reverse of this coin. Uh, oh, dang it. Oh, yeah, there you go. The reverse of the coin says Telenet Japan. That looks pretty neat. But now I'm going to take a hit, I think. Oh, no, I made it. We've only got two hit points left, though, so uh, we're in kind of a bad way. And then uh, this stone statue tells us uh, that, I guess, Nizetti's waiting for us, so that's nice. So, like, when you're coming up this thing, you want to keep jumping up real high because you want to keep forcing the camera to go up because there's like some hidden item boxes up here. And since we're low on, on hit points, we really want to try to find some hearts. All right, illusion stop and answer a question. I don't really know what the point of any of this is. Uh, justice, powerless people, destiny of powerful people. That's That's all well and good. does not help us. Well, it was still a net gain of two hit points, but uh, I think we're going to need more than that.
I shouldn't have called those. It's like a coin slash saw blade. All right, another illusion asks another question. What are you after in this world? You know, uh, truth, justice, and the American way, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The heck, man. All right, so only the brave and true are able to come this far from here, only fake and decide your destiny. So this is kind of a lame part of the game, I think, because this should have been a boss battle. But instead, well, you'll see. So you've got all these uh, knights that keep coming onto the screen, but, like, they're really easy to kill. Which, I mean, I'm not complaining, but it's just, like, basically destroying all these knights is like your test before you can go see that Zimmerman dude or whatever his name is. Um, so why wouldn't that have been a boss battle? Because like I said, these guys, if you let them get too close, they'll swing their sword at you. But you're not really ever in any danger of having that happen. So, I mean, it's just kind of boring. All right. So now we can go see this Parcheesi guy. Um, but I, I want to show you, because the first time I played through this part, it kind of mess up my mind a little bit because the pixel art here is not good. So this is this Barzati guy or whatever his name is. Um, so just if you look just at him, like is that a sprite or I don't know whatever that is. That looks to me like a human body with a mouse head or a rat uh, uh, or, a, or a possum uh, looking down at the characters. And then it's got a hat on, like a little brown hat on. Like to me still... Even now that I know what it is, it still looks more like what I just described. And you'll see what it actually is here. Um, so we, we passed the test for braveness by killing a bunch of, like, basic enemies. And, oh, Nizetti, right. Um, can you release my... Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so here's what... So it's actually... Come on. Like an old guy with a long beard. All right, so he's got some concerns that we're not going to be able to defeat the Glames dude. And if I release the sword to its full power, you and the sword must return. Well, that's fine. All right, so now she's going to get all powered up here. She gets some extra uh, shoulder pads or whatever there. And then um, her her sword, I guess, gets more powerful. I, it's not anything you really notice when you're playing. Um, so now we get another cutscene with Glames, who somehow knows that the Valise sword got uh, powered up. That's his. That's the Letha sword there right in front of him in the foreground.
All right, so now we've kind of like crossed over from uh, Dreamland into the Dark World, which is appropriate because this is about the halfway point of the game. Uh, this game's only like an hour long, so. Oh, so this this level has these like really annoying. Uh, they're like gigantic robotic mosquitoes, which uh, since mosquito means uh, little fly is is kind of ironic, but calling them giant, I mean. Oh man, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, they kill him first. Uh, the A button, if you tap the A button while crouching, that's how you slide, but if you hold down the A button, that's how you switch between characters. So, so I go like that, and then boom, you slide. Oh, you suck. That doesn't really matter. Um, so we're basically just, we need to move from right to left uh, in this level. There's a couple different ways you can go. Um, going into that green slime, uh, it, it doesn't kill you instantly or anything, but um, you'll take damage for as long as you're submerged in there. So you kind of don't want to. Uh, don't want to do that. And then these things hover and uh, shoot this beam, but somehow, like, they're invincible, so I don't really understand that, but... Ooh, one up. Oh, I thought we could cut through there. Get away from me. Um, I mean, the, the boss battle for this, this is actually finally a tough boss battle when we get to it. Uh, so, I mean, we have literally no chance. If, if I get to him on this life, uh, we're not going to beat him. But I'd like to get as far as I can so that we can uh, hit the boss battle with full power. All right, so the boss battle is coming up uh, right here, but um, I said earlier that uh, uh, Cham was uh, the best character for one of the boss battles, and it's this one. Uh, there's no way we're going to beat this boss. Uh, you really have to have full uh, health to do it, but might as well get started anyway. So, I mean, this guy's just got like a zillion hit points, and then he sends this, that thing after you, but there's also those things like bubbling up from the floor, uh, which will also harm you, and then he does that charge. And, uh, yeah, so we're dead, which is fine. Um... So you just start off here right outside uh, the boss battle. So you you pretty much, you want to park it as close to him as is reasonably possible. And um, just keep whipping him as fast as you can. And then, you know, you just want to avoid when he sends that thing out. We're not, I'm not doing so hot, so, I mean, no guarantees we're going to beat him this time either. Like I said, he just has like a million hit points. Well, there we go, we got him. But, I mean, you see, I, I took probably three quarters... Uh, of my health and damage. Hmm. All right. Uh, I'm not a fan of this level. Uh, it's like an ice level. Switch back to uh, Yuko here. And we need to, we need to kind of power up 
a little bit because we um, got ki when you get killed, you lose all your power ups. All right, so this is the ice world, the coldest place in the dark world. The ground is icy and slippery. Watch your step. That's why I don't like it. Um, you know, I think it was like Super Mario Brothers 2 was like my first experience playing a game where, um, you know, it, the the floor could be slippery and I didn't like it back then either. So um, enemies we got to watch out for in this one. Uh, well, there's this there's this chick. Um, there's these uh, whatever that is. And uh, snowflakes, that right there appears. And then, like, there's these weird monkey things. We already saw one. But they just throw these things and then kind of hop away, so they're actually not really that big of a deal. And then these bouncy things... Uh, you can't do anything about. So that's kind of annoying because you have to end up timing some of your jumps. Yeah, like this one. And this, I, I can never get past this one without taking damage. Like that. Oh, no. All right, so we got to go back. Oh, oh, well. Oh, wow, it made it start the level over again. That sucks. Well, whatever. We didn't get that far, so I'm not really too worried about it. And then, I mean, you want to, even if you get past those things, you want to kill them because they keep bouncing around. They're, they're pretty annoying. And, um, we almost, we actually believe it or not, almost died right there because if that snowflake had hit us, it would have knocked us into the, um, into the pit. again. Yeah, we know. I mean, like I said, this game gives you unlimited continues, but I'll tell you right now, if we, when, whenever it is we get game over, um, we're going to be done. But, I mean, I would rather not get game over from doing something stupid like falling into a pit. You know what? That's it. Um, like I said, I don't like this level, but uh, usually I don't have this much trouble with it. But I guess maybe I'm I've been playing this game kind of a lot today. So uh, anyway, um, oh, we can stop the recording and uh, switch the view back. Hi. Um, I don't know. Like I said, I just I think it's a cool game. It's got cool music. It uh, like I said, it's the best Valise game in the series. So if you play this game, you think oh, this game's really cool. Uh, temper your expectations. For for the other two, especially Sid of Valis, uh, Valise. I always say I've always said Valis, but it actually is Valise, and but it's a it's a habit thing. So uh, yeah. Anyway, 
Um, or like I said, you know, check out the uh, Turbo CD versions and see what you think of those. And uh, yeah, I don't think I have anything else to say. We only have, after this, uh, one week left in uh, renovation month. I I'm pretty darn sure which game I'm going to play, but I'm not positive. And, uh, and then we'll move on to uh, other things. So that's going to do it for this episode of Weekend Rental. That's going to do it. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next week.